But Johnny Manziel had a uh, pro day today at Texas A&M. Even the Bush family showed up. It was that big we of a deal. That. Barbara was yeah, there. Yeah, Barbara was there. Uh, let's let's talk to uh, Jaws if he changed his mind at all. Have you have you changed your opinion of Manziel, Jaws? This was like the day the earth stood still. You know, the Johnny <laughs> Manziel workout. I mean, it was, it was incredible today. But um, let, let me take you to the field. And I, and I thought he had a, a very solid day. Uh, I was very impro- uh, impressed with the improvement in his mechanics. Uh, as I studied Johnny Manziel on tape, almost 10 games, all his touchdown pass, interceptions, and sacks, uh, there were parts of his game that really concerned me. Uh, I thought the mechanics at times were flawed. Uh, I, I thought at times he didn't read the progressions very well. Um, I, I was not a big fan of Johnny Manziel. I thought today there was a marked improvement in, in the way he delivered the football, the way he carried the football, his mechanics, his weight transfer, his weight in the back foot. So clearly since that uh, Duke game and the Chick-fil-A Bowl to end his career at Texas A&M, he's been working with George Whitfield, uh, his quarterback guru slash coach, and, and I think he showed a tremendous improvement. Um, now, again, we always say this is just one piece of the puzzle, but I think it was a positive step, uh, at least in my opinion today, for Johnny Manziel. Would you still not take him in the first three rounds? Uh, I wouldn't take him in the first round. Uh, I, I might think about it in the second and third round. But, but, but clearly uh, the, the improvement he made today, the velocity with which he threw the football, the touch that he had on the ball, I was very, very impressed. I was, you know, it, my tape study had me very concerned about his game. Uh, my concern now is the fact that he's he's still slight, you know, five foot eleven and three quarters. Not the biggest guy. Still a guy that takes a lot of square hits when he does run with the football. Uh, he certainly has the ability to extend plays and make plays. Uh, but the NFL uh, game is played from the pocket first, and if you have mobility and escapability, that's a secondary trait. Uh, although I was impressed with the way he he handled himself today. Remember, there was no defense. There was no pass rush pressure except for a couple of brooms they used to chase him around. Uh, but overall, I thought the body work was excellent. So I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be my devil's advocate question. Um, you know, he's improved his throwing motion. He's throwing the ball better. But there's nobody in his face. There's no 300-pound guy. And I've always noticed with athletes, even if they work on something, when it becomes the crux of the battle, they're going to return. To, I mean, Tim Tebow always returned to that same throwing motion. So how do we know that Johnny Manziel wouldn't? Yeah, and again, I mean, you know, the term that people use is kinesthetic retention. You know, you just keep doing it over and over again. It becomes part of how you throw the football, what your throwing slot is like, and are your mechanics consistent. Uh, you're absolutely right. We won't know until he gets into an NFL camp, starts playing preseason games, a regular season game, if these uh, mechanical uh, flaws that he once had have now disappeared when bodies are flying around him, when people are hitting him as he throws, when people are in his face, when color flashes in front of him. We won't know that, but I, but I, but I, I, I must say I, I am uh, happy for Johnny Manziel's progress so far, and he showed that at least he can improve those mechanics. And, you know, I, I like the fact that he wore shoulder pads today. He wore a helmet. He wore his rib pads. That's how you play the game. No quarterback has ever done their pro day in the pads that he wore today. So I, I think he came out with a little bit, little bit of a mission. Uh, it's probably smelled a little blood in the water that this was his day, and, and I thought he performed very well. I'll, I'll move him up a little bit, but I'm not ready to say he's going to be a first-round player okay. or, or pick him at first round. I'm happy about that because I thought if you completely changed your mind, no, then no, 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 it no. would bother me because I, I, ultimately, Jaws, is this seems like a kid that – you have to judge based on how he plays in the game. It looks like because he, he's never going to be the quintessential quarterback, right? So his best attributes is his ability to freelance, his, his ability to make things out of nothing, and that really can't show up in a pro day, right? You're, you're absolutely right. And, and, you know, you have to look at the tape, and that is one area of his game that he is very good at. But that's not part of the game that you project to the NFL. We all know in the NFL, you start breaking the pocket, you won't last three games. Defenses will break your, you know, they'll break your leg, they'll bend your face fast. All those terms I hear defensive guys talking about. The NFL game is played from the pocket. So in that regard, yes, there was improvement. He played better. But at the end of the day, you know, can he still continue to improve like he did in the last 90 days with a quarterback coach? Can he still improve when he gets drafted by an NFL team? But those are still big question marks. 
Does it make you scratch? I know you have to do TV in a bit, but does it make you scratch your head? We've had Bill Polian come on here and say that he would take Johnny Manziel with the first pick in the draft. Does that make you scratch your head? Yeah, it really does. Uh, you know, I have unbelievable respect for Bill. And, and you know, I, I watched Bill. Bill was at the workout. And, you know, it's all he was talking about, magic, magic, magic. I mean, <laughs> then we hear the term, it, it, magic. I, I, I don't get it. You know, I, I, I look at how they play the game. Yeah, he can make some plays, but uh, in the NFL, those magical plays and having it uh, are, are few and far between. It's about having consistent mechanics, throwing the ball with velocity, throwing the ball with accuracy, having, you know, touch on the ball, the pocket in the awareness. And, and, and I still believe that size still does matter. I think size is an attribute. And a guy under six foot that can hit, that gets hit a lot, I would be very concerned to take him not only with the number one pick, but in the first round. All right, we have thirty seconds before you have to leave us. Uh, Mark Sanchez to the Eagles. You think it's a good move by them? Yeah, I, I, I think I think Mark is is a rock solid backup quarterback. You know, he's got experience in this league. He's got playoff experience. He's won games in the playoffs. He's been in big games. Uh, I think Chip Kelly, Howie Roseman, Tommy Gamble, all the guys up in that Eagle front office, when they evaluated this, they still see a guy that has some value and can help them if needed. But make no mistake, Nick Foles is the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles.